I should tell you that I've had laryngitis the last few days, a little bit of a cough, and I'm about over it, but in case my voice doesn't sound right, it's because I still have a little bit of laryngitis. Okay. Well, where we left off was looking at the inverse trigonometry functions in the first octet. So the output to an inverse trig function is an angle, and if the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees, the first quadrant, um, then that would be um, everything's positive. And it's actually very nice. But if we want to consider the inverse trig functions for other quadrants, it gets a little tricky. It gets a little tricky. And um, so to kind of justify all this, I, I have to kind of draw kind of a weird graph here. Now, I have um, my units here are equal on each axis. And the sine function then, uh, y equals sine x, just ordinary sine. Uh, oops, not up there. There, okay, so here's pi over 2 is about here. Goes like this. I know I've got a small amplitude, but I got this for a reason, so uh, bear with me here. So here's our, here's our, I'll just kind of guesstimate this. Um, here's our regular sine function. And y equals sine x. So what does a graph of y equals inverse sine of x look like? Or, yeah, what, what would that look like? Well, um, it turns out, it's basically this has been flipped up to here. It's gone vertical. Now, I'll try to justify that here in a minute, so, so bear with me on this. If I attempt to uh, draw this inverse sine function, it looks like this. It kind of snakes up and down. And so it comes down here. All right, so um, <laughs> there it is. Okay, now I'll write this in. Y equals to inverse sine of X. All right, and um, you know, <clears throat> all right, why, why is that true? Well, uh, first of all, in the theory of inverse functions, which is more of an, a, an algebra topic than a trig topic, if one function is the inverse of another, for example, the um, x cubed and cube root of x are inverses. You know, the cube root cancels the x cubed and the x cubed cancels cube root. Um, functions which are, are um, inverse functions are, in graph wise, are reflected across the diagonal y equals x. So y equals x goes about like this. And, uh, okay, so it's kind of hard to draw this perfectly. I'm a little bit off there, but not too bad there. Y equals X. All right, so I'm going to attempt to justify that in a trig class. Algebra class, I believe we can, I can find a justification for that. All right, um, but something to think about here. If a, you remember what, about functions, if, if a, graph is a function that every vertical line crosses in one place at most. It can't hit two places at one time. And so the sine function passes the vertical line test. You've heard of the vertical line test most likely. The, uh, this graph doesn't. This graph doesn't. And uh, it's really it's not a function the way I've drawn it because it won't pass the vertical line test. Now in a, in a practical sense if you you know, were to calculate, for example, the inverse sine of um, one half, you know, one half's here, you get infinitely many answers, okay? And, uh, which is not very useful, is it? Infinitely many answers. How's your calculator going to deal with that? All right. Um, so actually, the sine function does not pass the horizontal line test. Because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, in other words, the horizontal line will well, intersect it more than once, a lot more than one, infinitely many times actually, then the, um, it does not have, technically speaking, an inverse function. All right, but we need an inverse function. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So, um, yeah, I need another color pen. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I didn't think I had, I should have a, uh, Another color pin around here, but it might take me too long to find it. So, 
Um, the way around this is to think of restricting the inverse sine to only part of this. Actually, this is pi over 2, or 90 degrees, and this is minus pi over 2, or minus 90 degrees. I'm going to draw a bigger picture of this. But by artificially restricting this snake-like curve to here to here, it's now a function. It passes a vertical line test. All right, so I'm going to raise this, draw a bigger picture, and then we'll start talking about quadrants. Now we can figure out the inverse cosine, which quadrants it applies to, in a very similar way. And remember that uh, if you <laughs> kind of flip this around this way, cosine starts, cosine zero is one, starts up here and it goes down and up and down like that. All right, so when we flip it or, or, or reflect it across the diagonal, y equals x, we get this. Now this would continue on like so would snake around just like the inverse sine. And, um, but in this case, if I went down here in first and fourth quadrants, it wouldn't be a function. It wouldn't pass the, the uh, vertical line test. So this time, we, for inverse cosine, we have to restrict the um, range of the function, the output of the function, to the, uh, for zero to, to pi, which is quadrant one and quadrant two. Um, all right, so let's write that out. So the, uh, the inverse cosine is greater or equal to zero radians and less or equal to uh, pi radians. Or, in degrees, it's between zero degrees and 180 degrees. So we have, uh, so far, Everything's defined in the first quadrant, but the inverse cosine is first and second, and inverse sine is first and fourth. Um, all right, so four more to go, <laughs> and uh, probably I think the trickiest for me is the inverse uh, cotangent, but because I've messed that up a few times because I simply forgot. But anyway, um, I think I suppose I'll at least uh, we'll, we'll do a picture for inverse tangent and inverse secant, and then I'll just lay out all six of them. And then we'll work some problems. Here's the inverse tangent. And um, it actually would, you know, the, the graph of this was shown in an earlier video. Inverse tangent uh, looks like this. Uh, boy, I didn't do that very well. Let me, let me, let me try that one again. Um, but it's every pi radians are 180 degrees, we get a new cycle for this, a new period, and I'll do one more. Anyway, this uh, hopefully you recall seeing this odd looking character in, uh, in a previous video. Um, if I reflected it across the diagonal, I would get this one, but this would be repeated up here and there, and down here and there, it would just go on forever. So we restrict the, uh, the output from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, which means the inverse tangent is uh, shares the same quadrants as the inverse sine. So let's uh, look at that. Now it's a, a little slightly different here because inverse tangent cannot equal a pi over 2 because the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined due to division by 0. So my uh, restriction here then is uh, um, Inverse tangent lies between minus pi over 2 radians and pi over 2 radians, or between minus 90 degrees, and I just contradicted myself, didn't I? This cannot be equal here. So let me fix that. All right. Less than inverse tangent x less than pi over 2. Okay, here we go. Oh, and it's true, anytime you punch an inverse tangent, you'll get something either, oh, <laughs> 90 degrees, right? We're in degrees down here, 90 degrees. All right, so anytime you punch an inverse tangent, you'll get a number that's either a negative uh, degree 
greater than 90 degrees or less than a, a positive 90 degrees. It'll be in between there. There's inverse tangent and um, its quadrants one and four, like I mentioned. So inverse tangent lives there. <laughs> okay. Um, if we if we try to uh, make a quadrants one and two, I think. Uh, uh, well, what would that look like? In case you wonder about these things, if I wanted to say, well, I only want this uh, to live in quadrants one and two, then what would be the problem? All right. Uh, well, that is the problem, isn't it? Because uh, it uh, well, there's a discontinuity here in the in the uh, in the range there. We'd have to split up, kind of kind of weird, because the inverse tangent is undefined at either 90 degrees or 270 or negative 90 degrees. So, anyway, it's, it's uh, it turns out it looks like it's going to be a bit awkward. But it doesn't matter what we think. The, uh, the mathematical world has, you know, establishment has decided that inverse tangent lives between minus 90 and positive 90. And, uh, and it's a sensible choice. So, uh, and all the calculators are programmed that way. So here, I can live with that. I think um, if we can draw more pictures and do the other three inverse trig functions. I think I'm just going to lay them out on a table and then we'll work some examples and just refer to that table. Well, for convenience, I've mapped out uh, all six inverse trig functions. Uh, inverse sine is in quadrants one and four. So is inverse tangent, one and four. So is inverse cosecant, one and four. So um, these, you know, inverse sine and inverse cosecant, you know, you think, yeah, they're kind of similar, aren't they? Um, and uh, so they would um, show the same quadrants. It, it works, they do. Uh, inverse tangent, we developed that one, that was quadrants one and four. So then uh, inverse cosecant is one and two, as is the inverse secant is one and two. And inverse cotangent is one and two. And, uh, and why is that true? Because the inverse cotangent is um, defined at 90 degrees. It's undefined at zero degrees and 180 degrees. So it really lives between zero degrees and 180. That's why inverse cotangent is quadrants one and two. So you, you may choose to list these differently for your own notes, uh, in whatever order makes sense to you. I just kind of did this off the top of my head. So, all right, so we've, uh, <laughs> we have introduced these inverse trig functions by quadrant, and all of these are kind of artificially uh, defined functions where we had to restrict the output, the range of these functions, so that they would be true functions. And, um, and all that happily matches, matches what our calculators do. So, uh, <laughs> well, it should, but, but, but uh, it's not that the calculator figures this out for us. It just, they're programmed based upon this, this uh, schematic here. All right, so um, let's go on and work some problems.